Hello and welcome back to our Lord of the Rings LCG solo progression series. And today's quest is the Fords of Isen, which is the first scenario in the Voice of Isengard Deluxe Expansion. And this is the beginning of the fourth cycle in the game, the Ringmaker Cycle. A quick reminder, in the series we're playing through each quest in chronological order of the game's initial release. And we'll only be using player cards that were available at the time of this quest release. I'm calling this deck How Low Can You Go? Because in this scenario we're going to try through a combination of playing cards and or discarding them. We're going to try to get our hand actually down to zero. <laughs> That's kind of the, the goal because uh, like all new cycles in this game, new concepts are being introduced. Like with uh, Against the Shadow you had battle questing and things like that. Now you have the time mechanic and uh, we'll see what that is in a minute. But also, some of these scenarios in this cycle, they really penalize you for drawing cards and having cards in hand. And that's usually how I play the game with Berevor, just lots and lots of card draw. And so I do enjoy this new way of playing the game. It presents a new puzzle and, uh, you know, it just keeps things from getting stale. So I appreciate that about this new cycle. Uh, this is not a difficult quest. Uh, it goes pretty quickly. Let's get to the quest and see how we do. Okay, we'll look at our opening hand, and it's um, good to have Light of Valinor, but you don't have to. It's most important to just really look at your deck and think, do I have cards that I could use? And uh, the, the fact that I in round two I could play Envoy of, Palagir, Envoy of Pelargir and sort of Power Spirit uh, resources, I think this seems like a good opening hand. So we'll just keep it. And let's look here at 1A, Fight at the Fords. Riding north to the Gap of Rohan, you come upon a battle at the Fords of Isen. A small number of Rohirrim have taken a defensive position on the islet in the river's center where a large force of wild Dunlendings assails them. You must move swiftly, lest the river run red with the blood of Rohan. For setup, we add the islet to the staging area and attach Grima to that location. So this is actually Grima Wormtongue. This is before the Lord of the Rings events, and so he is not yet known to be a traitor. So uh, he's an ally at this point. But here's the islet. It's just a small kind of island in the middle of this river. It's immune to player card effects. And while the islet is the active location, Dunland enemies will get a threat boost. And it tells us here to attach Grima to this location. So thematically, Grim is sort of hanging onto a rock for dear life. He's scared. Uh, if free of encounters, the players, the first player gains control of Grima. So we need to travel here, clear it, because it is immune to player card effects. We have to just basically clear this in round two is as early as we can do it. Uh, there is an action uh, whenever we finally do gain Grima that we could use where we can exhaust him to draw a card. If he ever leaves play, we lose the game. Uh, then it says each player searches the encounter deck for one different Dunland enemy and adds it to the staging area, shuffling the encounter deck. So let's grab uh, the Dunland Berserker. This is the one I always start off with. There's not really a penalty to it being in the staging area. It's, uh, it only becomes a problem whenever he's engaged with you. Okay, so that's it for setup. 1B, we have to make six progress, and now there's a new keyword in this cycle, time. And if you're playing the physical game, what you do here, time five, you would just place five resource tokens on this card, and they represent time. And uh, sometimes encounter effects will cause you to discard a time counter, but most often time counters are just discarded at the end of every refresh phase. So not at the end of the round, the end of the ref refresh phase. And that makes a difference for some effects, but it is the end of the refresh phase. And so uh, after five refresh phases or five rounds, if you want to think about it that way, uh, then the, we have to do this forced effect. And this is always true for the time counters. It counts down to a negative um, result. Forced, after the last time counter is removed from this stage, discard Grima from play, which would be an immediate loss because if he leaves play, the players lose the game. So we definitely want to uh, make the necessary progress, clear the islet, and uh, gain Grima so that we don't lose. <laughs> the players cannot advance unless the first player controls Grima. So the whole 
thematic purpose here is just to save the Rohirrim and Grima. Let's get to it. Here's the resource phase. And we're going to try to play uh, just as many cards as we can. At this point, we really can only play one. Uh, let's go ahead, I think, and put... Uh, might as well put Sylvan Refugee into play and save this resource on Glorfindel. And we are going to quest with Eowyn and with the Sylvan Refugee. And that will be a little bit of progress here. Let's just think here. Um, do I want to quest with Glorfindel? Uh, I think I will. Let's quest with him forced after Glorfindel exhausts to commit to a quest. Raise your threat by one. We're not really worried about threat in this uh, scenario. There are some enemies that we wouldn't want to deal with right away, but their threat is higher than 30. Uh, like there's 33, I think, and 37. So we're fine at this point to just put the willpower out. Okay, so before we reveal a card in this scenario, there is a particular enemy that surges if you have three cards in hand. And then it uh, is a problem. It gets an extra will, a threat boost if you have five cards. There's no way for me to really get my hand down at this point. So I, I don't need to preemptively discard a card using uh, Aowen's action. Discard one card from your hand to give Aowen plus one willpower until the end of the phase. And you can only, you can only do that once uh, per round for each character, each player. Uh, so at this point, there's not really a benefit to, to using her action preemptively. But sometimes... If it gets me down to having two cards in hand, I will use that uh, that action. And we reveal Gap of Rohan. While Gap of Rohan is in the staging area, Dunlin enemies get plus one attack. Okay, we were successful in the quest. And I neglected to put the time counters on Fight at the Forge. So, oops. So there's five time counters on Fight at the Forge. So four progress made. Uh, if I want to, uh, just and I think I need to go ahead and maybe discard. I mean, these are all really good cards, though. Um, but we want to get our hand size down, so let's go ahead and just discard Faint. And that boosts uh, Aowen. We'll do that. We did that during the action window before quest resolution, so we actually have made five, five uh, progress. And it's really not about the progress as much as getting our hand size down. How low can you go, right? So we'll travel here to the islet. There's no travel effect or anything. Um, it says while it is the active while it is the active location, each Dunland enemy in play gets plus one threat. Additionally, Gap of Rohan gives Dunland enemies plus one attack while it's in the staging area. So this Dunland Berserker is boosted. All right, during the encounter phase, our threat is higher than its engagement, so it's going to engage us and attack for two, actually for three, because it's being boosted. Uh, Bayorn will defend without exhausting. He does not have to exhaust to defend, so three against one. And the shadow, there isn't one. And I, do, I never mind seeing Ill Tidings discarded. This is kind of an annoying card. So three against one, two damage on Bayorn. Bayorn can attack and destroy all by himself the Dunlin Berserker. So uh, Bayorn just doesn't like that guy. Okay, so we'll refresh, and at the end of the refresh phase, this is where you remove a time counter. Uh, I keep hitting the wrong button. So we're down to four, and uh, once this whittles down to zero, then we will have to observe that forced effect. So next round. And we'll spend both of Bayorn's resources to pay for Envoy of Pelar gear. After Envoy of Pelagir enters play, add one resource to a Gondor or Noble Hero's resource pool. Either one, we'll put it on uh, Glorfindel. And that means we have four spirit resources, so we can pay uh, for two of these allies. One, two, three, four. We'll put out Aether Swordsman and Arwen Undomiel. And now we will quest. Uh, Aether Swordsman each Outland's character you control gets plus one willpower, so he is boosted. And this is enough. We don't have to quest with Glorfindel. Moving forward, I really won't quest with Glorfindel, but I just wanted to get things going during the first round. Okay, so we reveal Pillaging and Burning. When revealed, each player draws a card. 
Uh, and actually, I should have. I got lucky. I should have discarded a card preemptively because in this deck, there is an enemy. Uh, this one here, Dunland Prowler. While any player has three or more cards in hand, Dunland Prowler gains Surge. And so a lot of times what I'll do, I'll shuffle the deck. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just discard, like I would have discarded a Troll Shaw Scout. Uh, and in doing that, of course, I boost Eowyn's Willpower by one. But primarily, I've gotten down to two uh, cards in hand. And so th that Dunland Prowler could not Surge. But... I neglected to do that and, and got lucky in the process. When revealed, each player draws a card. Uh, did I do that already? No. So let's draw the card. And there's nothing in play that penalizes me for drawing a card. Uh, each player raises his threat by one for each card in his hand. And so I'll have to raise my threat by four. And let's go ahead and discard Watcher of the Bruinen using Awen's action just to get our hand down. Uh, that boosted us and we made nine progress so eight on the current quest we're at 13 and we cleared the islet that goes to the victory display and that leaves grima free of encounters if he is free of encounters the first player gains control of grima so we have him now in our lineup and uh, we have advanced because it says the players cannot advance unless the first player controls grima we do so we'll move on to stage two, Dunlending Attack. After driving the wild men back from the islet, you are surprised to find King Theoden's personal advisor, Grima Wormtongue, among the men defending the fords. He tells you that he was on his way to Isengard when he was caught in the attack. Before he can say more of his errand, the Dunlendings redouble their assault. Save me, Grima cries as he shrinks behind you. The life of the king's counselor is in your hands. So we have to make 14 progress, and when revealed, each player searches the encounter deck and discard pile for one different Dunland enemy and adds it to the staging area. Shuffle the encounter deck. So we'll grab out of the discard pile this guy that Bayorn doesn't like, the Dunland Berserker. Then we have to shuffle the encounter deck. And it told us to uh, search and add one, you know, it could be the encounter deck or discard, add it to the staging area. I don't want to grab one out of encounter deck because I'd love to see more of these guys. Uh, Bayorn just eats their lunch. Okay, time two means we put two time tokens on Dunland in attack. And at the end of every refresh phase, we'll lose a time token. Uh, forced after the last time counter is removed from the stage. Each player assigns X damage among characters he controls. X will be the number of cards in our hand, but we're about to get down to, to zero, hopefully. Okay, during the travel phase, let's travel to Gap of Rohan, and that'll take away the boost, the attack boost uh, that is uh, afforded from Gap of Rohan being in staging area. During the encounter phase, Dunland Berserker will make an optional or an engagement check, and will attack for two, will defend with Bayorn, two against one, and there is no shadow, one damage on Bayorn. Um, and then we'll attack and deal the damage to destroy Dunland Berserker. There is an action window, and there's no reason uh, why I shouldn't. Let's go ahead and use Grima's action, Exhaust Grima, to draw a card. Might as well. And uh, so that was in the action window after applying damage, which, which exists even after you've destroyed your final enemy. Okay, so we will refresh. And at the end of the refresh phase... A time counter is removed from Dunlendian attack. Next round. We will play a West Road Traveler from hand. And we will go ahead and quest. And we're making quite a bit of progress. It won't be enough to clear Dunlendian attack even if I send Glorfindel, and I want to leave nine attack available because there is an enemy that has a health and defense of nine. So uh, before we go to staging, though, let's just get our hand down to a count of two. So let's play Elrond's Council, lowering our threat by three and boosting our willpower. And then we'll discard... Um,
probably just trying to think, do I really need Trollshaw Scout? Uh, part of why I like Trollshaw Scout is its uh, ability to help us discard cards, but we're getting down to that zero. Let's, let's, let's discard Trollshaw Scout. And so we made uh, 15 progress. Well, we didn't make progress yet. We have to stage. Uh, so here's the staging. And it is that nine health and defense Dunland Chieftain. Uh, force after Dunland Chieftain engages a player, discard X cards from the top of the encounter deck. X is the number of cards in the engaged player's hand. But at this point, I don't really want to engage him because I still have two cards in hand. Uh, that's not really what I want. But we made 12 progress, meaning we made nine on the current quest. And did not quite clear it. Now, I, I can optionally engage Dunland Chieftain, uh, but I have two cards in hand. And so whenever he engages us, we'll have to discard two cards from the top of the encounter deck. And I would put the topmost Dunland enemy discarded this way into play, engage with the player. So there are a couple of Dunland Chieftains. I think there's just two. So it'd be a real nightmare if I engaged it. Yeah, there's two. Or if I engaged it and then Dunland Raider was added to the engaged area, then I have two really tough enemies. I mean, I do have a wizard's voice at that point. Uh, and I could destroy Dunland Chief. Maybe it's worth doing. We'll take a chance. Let's do it. So during the encounter phase, let's engage optionally Dunland Chieftain. Forced after Dunland Chieftain engages a player, discard X cards from the top of the encounter deck. X is going to be the number of cards in my hand. I've got two. And then I would put the topmost Dunland enemy discarded this way into play, engage with a player. Okay, so we're going to discard two cards. One, two. Okay, so the topmost is Dunland Prowler. And it comes into play, engage with us. So we, we did have an enemy discarded, but that's not so bad. It's uh, especially since we had Wizard's Voice, it seemed like it was a, a good decision. So we're going to play Wizard's Voice. This is a new card, Doom 3. It's a new piece of the this cycle. You have cards that cost you nothing, but you can raise your threat through the Doom keyword to use the action or the effect. Action, each player chooses one enemy, engage with him until the end of the phase. Each chosen enemy cannot attack the player that chose it. So we just, it's like a feint uh, at the cost of Doom 3. So we will cancel Dunland Chieftain's attack. Here is Dunland Prowler attacking us for two against Bangorn's one. Attack the enemy gets plus one attack. If this attack destroys a character, remove one time counter from the current quest. But uh, just one damage on Bayorn. So we'll attack for five, three, and nine, and destroy Dunland Chieftain. And we'll deal with this guy later. Refresh, and at the end of the refresh phase, we remove a time counter, meaning we've gotten down to zero, so we have this forced effect. After the last time counter is removed from the stage, each player assigns X damage among characters he controls, where X is the number of cards in his hand, uh, so I should just do one point of damage somewhere because I have one card in my hand. And we'll put it on just uh, Arwen. And finally, place two time counters on the stage. So it's back uh, back to the same ticking clock and that effect could happen again in a couple of rounds. So next round. Right here is a attachment. Can't afford to play both West Road Traveler and Glorfindel, but Glorfindel's willpower of three is better than West Road Traveler's willpower of two. Let's quest. We don't need that much willpower, do we? So uh, I'll just leave anybody ready that has uh, attack values. And we reveal... Dunlending Bandit. Uh, while engaged with a player, Dunlending Bandit gets plus one attack for each card in that player's hand. Okay, so we've made 11 progress. Uh, now I could, do 
turn this action window before quest resolution, I can discard West Road Traveler and have no cards in hand, meaning that this uh, Dunlending Bandit is not boosted. Uh, he just attacks for one, which is helpful for Bayorn. But this is willpower that I might would like to have in a minute. I think I'd rather hang on to the willpower. So we will advance. We made 11 progress. We're at 20. And we advance to the final stage. Hold the fords. The Dunlending's assault is relentless and your arms grow weary. Take me to Isengard, Grima pleads, but you will not abandon the defense. You will either break the will of the enemy or give your life in a heroic last stand. When revealed, each player searches the encounter deck and discard pile for a different Dunland enemy and adds it to the staging area. Shuffle the encounter deck. So we know exactly who we want. This guy's having a bad day. Let's, uh, let's bring in the Dunland Berserker. And so uh, it says put him in the staging area, then we shuffle the encounter deck. Hold the fords. Time counters are three. And there's a forced effect after the last time counter is removed from the stage. Discard the top X cards of the encounter deck. X is going to be the number of cards in my hand. Add each enemy discarded this way to the staging area. It's a little bit like the Dunland Chieftain. But uh, usually by the time I get to this point, I can just make it so that I don't have cards in hand, unless it's that uh, treachery. While there is at least one enemy in play, the players cannot defeat the stage. If the players defeat the stage, they win the game. So I've got to make progress and destroy all the enemies. Okay, during the encounter phase, uh, we've got three enemies engaging us. Might should have pitched uh, West Road Traveler meaning that this uh, this guy would only attack for one, but uh, Bayorn can do this. These are just low attacks. Okay, so Dunlending Bandit is getting a plus one boost because I have a card in hand. So Bayorn is going to defend two against one. Means one damage on Bayorn. Dunland Prowler is going to attack for two, and Bayorn will defend two against one. Attack an enemy gets plus one. If this attack destroys a character, remove one time counter from the current quest. So that's going to be two damage on Bayorn. And Dunland Berserker will attack for two. Bayorn defends for one. Attack an enemy gets plus one. So two damage, and so he did survive. But he is, he's uh, got a lot of arrows in him. Okay, so let's destroy. Since Bayorn hates this guy, let's get rid of Dunland Berserker. Because he's going to attack us, uh, he has that forced effect that says uh, after the engaged player draws any number of cards, Dunland Berserker makes an attack. So during the resource phase, he would attack us. So he's definitely the first one to get rid of. And now um, probably the next one to get rid of is Dunland Prowler. So let's go three, four, five, six. That's enough to destroy Dunland Prowler. And if we make sure we have no cards in hand, then Dunland and Ban is only attacking for one. So we can actually take that undefended and save uh, Bayorn from uh, possibly dying. Okay, at the end of combat, we discard shadows and we refresh. And at the end of the refresh phase, we remove a time counter. Uh, next round. Let's go ahead and play West Road Traveler. And we are going to quest. I'm trying to think. Uh, Sylvan Refugee, after a character leaves play, discard Sylvan Refugee from play. Have I chumped with anybody? I don't think so. I think uh, we haven't actually had a chump yet. So we'll have to keep that in mind. But we, we're making enough progress to win here. I think we should just go for it. Uh, let's uh, let's discard Line of Valinor to boost Eowyn, and that way we have no cards in hand. 
And I'm going to leave Envoy Pillar Gear ready just in case we need a chomp. Let's re reveal Fords of Ison. Okay, so we've made the necessary progress. While Fords of Ison is in the staging area, players cannot gain resources from card effects. The only card that would be affected by this is Envoy of Pillar Gear's response. Otherwise, we don't add resources to our uh, to our heroes. All right, so forced after Fords of Ice and becomes the active location, each player with fewer than five cards in his hand draws cards until he has five in his hand. So we won't travel here. But uh, let's make 17 progress, which is enough to clear hold the Fords. And here is Dunlending Bandit attacking for one. While engaged with a player, Dunlending Bandit gets plus one attack for each card in that player's hand. I don't have any. So he's just attacking for one, and we are going to chump with Envoy of Pelar Gear. And there is no shadow, but Envoy of Pelar Gear didn't have any defense, and so she leaves play. And now we attack back for eight, which is enough to destroy Dunlending Bandit. And it says while there is at least one enemy in play, the players cannot defeat the stage. If the players defeat the stage, they win the game. So there are no enemies and we have made the necessary progress to win. As you can see, that's a you know, pretty quick scenario. It doesn't go long. I've won it in as few as four before, but it's more likely that you win it in seven or even eight rounds. So this was a pretty quick win. It just it has to do with how much willpower can we get out. And sometimes you might play and have more of the, the events than you really want. But that's it. Let's look real quick at the encounter deck because there are a bunch of things that could have happened in a short playthrough like this. You just don't see everything. Uh, the Dunlin Ra Raider attacks for five. It's you know big beefy enemy. When it engages us, that player must deal X damage divided among characters he controls where X is the number of cards in his hand. So a little bit like... Um, well, I think... What, 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 what was it that damages you based on what you have in your hand? Maybe this is the only thing that does that. But anyway, there's something that happened earlier with damage based on how many uh, cards in hand. I'm, I'm blanking. But we already saw Dunlin Chieftain, so that was good to see. Uh, this is a returning enemy. This one is specific to this scenario, maybe? No, it's not. We'll see that later. And we saw Dunlin Prowler. We didn't see it added to staging, though. While any player has three or more cards in hand, it gains Surge, so you want to try to get your hand down to two or less. We didn't see Dunlin Tribesmen, but some more of that synergy. Each player draws a card when revealed, and it boosts itself by plus one threat until the end of the round for each card you draw, including like the resource phase. So that can be maybe a difficult enemy. Locations, I think we saw uh, all of them, but we did not see the King's Road. But nothing really difficult about the locations. And uh, you raise your threat by how many cards you have in hand after having drawn one. This is interesting. Ill Tides, Tidings. When revealed, the first player draws this card into his hand. So it counts as a card draw, which can trigger other effects. Ill Tidings cannot leave that player's hand. Then if the player has five or more cards in his hand, Ill Tidings gains Surge. And so this makes it where if you got this, there's two copies. You know, you could not get your hand down to zero. We didn't see any of these condition attachments, but there are some conditions that can be attached to the current quest. And uh, when you draw cards, of the, however many, you know, so like Barivor would draw two, that would count as a single instance of drawing cards. You would deal one damage to a character. And there's a different one that does threat increase when you draw cards. Like I said, that is a pretty quick quest. We won it in five rounds. And uh, we did it with a small hand. As Jewel sings, uh, I just had that idea, that thought. There's an old song. My hands is, are small, so I guess our hands, uh, our hand was small in this one. But uh, we will continue on with the uh, voice of Isengard, and the second quest, which is the best one in the in the voice of Isengard, is really difficult uh, to catch an orc. So looking forward to playing that one, and having you join me then. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.